Before the video starts, I just want you to close your eyes and imagine something nostalgic. Okay. If you're a kid from the 2000s, that could be any game. It could be, you know, it could be Halo 2, you know, going through the battlefield with a buggy. It could be Minecraft, you know, finding your first diamonds. Or, if you're like me, that game is Borderlands. People are talking a lot about Borderlands right now because there is Borderlands 4 that's coming out. And I feel like it's only fair to talk about what makes a good Borderlands game in general. What is it? For me, what is a good Borderlands game? I think I summed it up pretty well. And I feel like the only way I could even make a tier list, if you would say, would be to play all the games. Now, I could not be fucked to do that, but I did it anyway. I played every single Borderlands game that's really important to the story. I didn't play the Telltale games. I didn't play the Wonder Tiny Tina Wonderland bullshit because I don't really like that game in general. I think these games fall into two categories in my opinion. A lot of people are probably going to disagree with me. I'm completely fine with that. But shut the fuck up. I put these into two categories. I put them into story, I put them into gameplay, and then I, you know, overall what the game is. And we're going to start off with Borderlands 1 because it's the first one in the series. And a lot of people are going to hate me for this. But I think Borderlands 1 is the worst one in the series. I think this game is everything that Borderlands should not be. And honestly, I don't think I'm wrong. And here's why I think that. First of all, the story is really fucking boring. There's almost nothing that happens in the story. At least in the beginning. It's like the, the game is in a tutorial stage until you hit like 24. Level 24. And I think that's ridiculous. There's no point to that. I feel like the game should show you that you're into like take borderlands 2 for it i'm going to reference the borderlands 2 a lot by the way because that game is the best one out of the series and i feel like that's the perfect borderlands game so shut up the reason this game's story is so boring is because you never know when you leave the tutorial because you know you start you start in the arid badlands and you sort of do this tutorial where you open up the 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 town we open up the town but then zed is like hey you gotta get your name out there and it's like okay cool you go kill nine toes you do missions for tk baja and then that's about it and then you you get scooter and then you go to the next area and the game is still telling you what to do it's like okay now we're hunting the vault pieces but there's no like there's no cutscenes. there's no real show of progression and i feel like it's just it's it's so boring. It's just you. It's just going through the, the land. And it's not like it would even work. Because in this... this I feel like this game and Borderlands 3 are the complete opposites. But I feel like gameplay is more important. Because in this game, the story is almost non-existent. You're just going through the game. Going to the diamond symbols. Until you beat the game. That's, that's what it feels like in Borderlands. Because the, the dialogue is so what the fuck is going on half the time that's what it feels like and then the gameplay doesn't even replace that because the the gameplay is so bad it is so terrible the gameplay is so terrible it's the movement is shit the fov is shit unless you change it by uh, pretty much modding the game for example for example the shooting the shooting in this game is terrible the sights in this game are terrible it is so weird to shoot a gun that shows you where you're aiming, but it's not even the part that you're going to shoot at. It's like, for example, snipers. I played Mordecai with Borderlands, and it's just, it. I I tried to do snipers. I ended up changing in the end because I, 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 I couldn't fucking do it. It was hurting my brain cells so much that I couldn't do it. The aiming is so bad that if you... If you, if you line a shot up with a sniper, you, you aim it up really nicely. You know, you, you got your fucking target right there. You know you're going to hit it. You know, you shoot and the bullet misses. It's like, what the fuck? And I thought it was a glitch at first. Oh, the bullet went through. No, you literally just miss. It's like an RNG generator when you're shooting a target. And it's even worse when you try to hip fire. It is so bad in this game. Especially when it comes to precision type of damage, it is so terrible. And I know they they fixed it in the, the in the remaster, but in the original Borderlands, it is so fucking awful. The gameplay, you know, in my opinion, the game is completely terrible. I do not like this game, and I wouldn't play this game for fun. 
But I will have to say this. I don't hate this game in a way that I, I, I wish this game never existed. I'm, I'm, I don't like this game because of how it feels to play, but I'm glad this game came out because this game is the bread and butter for what came next. It's like without this game, there wouldn't be a Borderlands 2, for example. So I am glad that this game is out there. But in Borderlands 2, they went a completely new route. They were like, you know what, fuck this. Let's make it funny. Doesn't really make a lot of sense, but still have a great story with a good conclusion in the end. Wait a minute. Talking about Borderlands 2, let's go straight to Borderlands 2. Now, I already said it before, this game is the best one in the series. No doubts. It is 100% the best one. And I know you're tired of hearing, oh, it's the best one, it has the best story, blah, blah, blah. What a lot of people don't say is they don't tell you exactly why the game is so good. I feel like they forget to tell you exactly what makes the story good what makes the gameplay good and i feel like that's a lot of the things that a lot of people miss but i'm gonna tell you why i feel like the first thing i'd have to i'd have to tell you the obvious what is good about this game and it's the characters what makes this game it, it's like the first character you meet claptrap it is such a good character to start a story with because it's just like the way he speaks to you in the beginning it's the perfect way to inform you that this is a tutorial He's teaching you the ways of Pandora. You go from this claustrophobic, very easily narrow uh, type of area to a very broad area, which, you know, implements the fact that you have left the tutorial area. And the level design in this game, it is so much better. It feels like there's so much more shit to do. And I feel like a lot of games, they, they fuck up in a way that the whole game feels like it's claustrophobic. Instead of the game having large areas where you can go and explore all the way to the other corner of the, you know, of the area. And not feeling like you're supposed to go in one direction. Instead of being like, yeah, you can go that way. The story wants you to go that way. But you can also go that way. And I feel like that's what Borderlands 2 did so well with the level design. If you go to Thousand Cuts... Thousand Cuts is probably one of the most narrow ones, narrow places in the game. Because when you're gonna go meet the Slab King, you're gonna go meet the Slab King. And that's about it. Like, that's about it. But in the before you go to Thousand Cuts, or before you turn right to the Slab King, the game tells you, over there is where the Vault Key is. It tells you, like, hey, this route that we're taking is not the only route you're gonna be taking during the entire game. I remember in pre-sequel, there were so many missions that had you go, uh, had you go through an area and then you had no reason to go back because there's nothing back there. Maybe there was like a boss, but with no dedicated drop, it's like, why the fuck would I even do that? You know what I mean? But in Borderlands 2, every area had two or three things in it that you could go do. And I feel like they implemented that in the game very well. Also, the side missions. Borderlands 2 has one of the best side missions in my opinion, in the whole series. It has a lot of jokes, it's fucked up. It's Borderlands-like. It's a perfect side mission, in my opinion. Continuing to talk about the story, and the reason everyone's sucking this game's dick, is because, well, it has the best main villain of any Borderlands game, period. And I'd say, it probably has one of the best villains ever in any game. And that villain would be Handsome Jack. Now, what makes this character so funny? It's the perfect balance of an evil, fucked up, and funny. Those three things. It is the perfect balance with those things. In the beginning, for example, Handsome Jack comes up to you, and he's like, Hey, hey how did, how did Buckle suck? How's your day been, buddy? We haven't really talked much since I left you for dead. Hey, you think you'll freeze to death out there? No, probably not. Bandits will get you first. My day? Been pretty good. Just bought a pony made of diamonds. Yeah, <laughs> because I'm rich. So, you know. But again, it's good. It's stupid. And I feel like that's what make this makes this game so good. Now, the evil side of this guy comes through a lot of the... I, I feel like it's more said in the... In the side missions, you start realizing like, holy shit, this guy's like an asshole. 
and he's a very fucked up guy really even though he might so seem funny and a little bit goofy Thanks. on the uh on the main story missions especially in the beginning but once you realize like holy shit he is very evil especially through the one like there's one of the one of the side missions right in the beginning of the game <laughs> Sorry, what was your name? Pierce. Well, Miss Pierce, and please don't tell me it's Mrs. Pierce who break my heart. This train doesn't belong to you. So why don't you turn around and face me, pumpkin? Holy nutballs! <laughs> what happened to your freaking face? My husband gave me a skag pearl ring. The pearl released hunger-inducing pheromones. Oh, you know what? I am so sorry. I, I just forgive me. What? Where's your husband now? He's dead. That is a heartbreaker. But <laughs> you got something in common with him now, at least. Yeah, he might seem like your average, you know, villain who's just trying to do a quest of his own, and then you, the main character, has to stop him before we, before he does it. But throughout the story, you kind of realize why he's doing it and then in the end it's almost like it's a, it's almost like his whole personality changes when you go to iridium blight it's like he becomes this guy who doesn't care anymore seriously he doesn't care anymore hey you're right on time key's nearly ready but before i cleanse this planet for good i'm gonna avenge my daughter but then he switches in the end to become the true villain of the game and now you're gonna defeat him as well so there's no like like in the other games it's like for example borderlands pre-sequel it's like you you make out as the villain of the game you know the fucking the bitch with the robot suit you you realize okay this guy is obviously the villain of the game we're gonna have to stop this guy and then you end up and it's the same thing the entire story she doesn't change in any way she always says the same thing, like, this is the only way, and this is what I have to do, I'm sorry. But in Borderlands 2, it's like, the, the, the main villain goes through this, like, phase of not believing that you could actually stop him. To this point where he's absolutely hopeless, and he's like, holy shit, I have to start, like, picking up my pace to be able to destroy the entire world. That's what I feel like the character development for Jack is very good. Now, the gameplay... Compared to Borderlands 1, like I already said, this was a pretty big jump. Like, they jumped from this to fucking just completely different. You know, it, it's just, it's, it's amazing what a game developer can do when the community tells you what <laughs> was shit. And then they go the complete opposite route and they make a game that's, in my opinion, it's like 10 times better. Like, even the elemental weapons, the way they made it. Because in Borderlands 1, it was like, you had, you still had a chance. But it didn't show you what the chance was. Or at least, I don't remember it showing. I'm gonna correct myself if that's true. But there was like this weird, like, two times, or three times, or four times. And I think that just showed, like, how much damage you do with that certain element. But in Borderlands 2, they made it so much more clear and better in my opinion it's like there's elemental effects now go on to enemies and they last like fire or corrosion or slag i'm gonna talk about slag in a minute <laughs> but uh but yeah the gameplay was way way better the guns feel way better uh the the drops you get for legendary weapons were way better there was actually really good dedicated drops if you got a world drop it actually felt really special you know there was like there was reasons to be happy about getting an, getting a legendary, which I think they fucked up in Borderlands 3, because getting a legendary in Borderlands 3 is the same feeling like getting a purple in Borderlands 2. It's like, oh shit, purple. But then after a while, you go into endgame, and you realize, oh, never mind, it's not that big of a deal. You know, I get purples all the time. Like in Borderlands 3, you get purples all the time. I feel like the skills... The skill tree for Borderlands 2 is way better as well. In Borderlands 1, the skill tree was kind of bland. It was kind of like... It was almost like they made the, the skill tree like this very strict. It was very strict in Borderlands 1. It was like for Mordecai, it was snipers and pistols. 
for Roland, it was uh, assault rifles, and that's about it. For Brick, it was fists and rocket launchers. For Lilith, it was SMGs. It was very strict on what you could use for each characters. But in Borderlands 2, it was like, it didn't matter what character you play. You could use pretty much anything, and you could still get away with it. And I feel like that's what made Borderlands 2 so good, was because you could play any character, and you could make any gun work with that specific character. And I feel like that's why this game made me play it so much, because I realized the opportunities you had with each gun and each character. But there is a big but in this whole game, and I feel like that's where the gameplay suffered a little bit. Not enough to take it away from the first spot of the game, but the only thing that I would say in this game was slag. And I feel like a lot of people can, uh, you know, back me up on this, that the slag element in Borderlands 2 was a little bit over the top. And I remember, you know, doing the first mission for Marcus, and it's like, hey, come check out this slag element. And you realize like, oh shit, that's pretty cool. Anyways, you know, you don't think about it that much at that point, but then you realize, oh my god, I can do like double my damage just by shooting with this Krog nozzle before I hit the boss. You will never not use slag in this game again. And a lot of the builds in this game, they rely on slag. Otherwise, you didn't do damage. It was just like, if you didn't have slag at OP8 or OP10 now, there was no point to play the game. There's no point because you, you couldn't do damage. But yeah, overall, this game's gameplay is really fucking good. They did fuck up in some situations, but they did pick it up with everything else. This game is the perfect specimen for Borderlands 2 game. And the reasons for that is the story is great. It has a very good, very good main villain. You know, the gameplay is good. The guns are way better. You have a reason to get guns in the game. You know, the, uh, the unique weapons. It's just, it's so good. The side missions, you almost want to do the side missions more than the main missions. Because the side missions are, like, its own thing that makes this game so good. This is the gem of Borderlands. I have nothing bad to say about it. We're gonna scorch the freaking planet in fire. There's gonna be screaming. Bandits are gonna die left and right. <laughs> The next game in the series would be Borderlands, the pre-sequel. Now, the storyline in this game takes place after Borderlands 1. So, but this game came after Borderlands 2. That's why it's called the pre-sequel. I just realized that like a week ago. My dumb ass. A lot of people would say this game is the same rating as like Borderlands 3. For me, I think this game is the second best one in the series. And the reason for that is the story. A lot of people say this the story in this game is shit, but in this game I feel like if you've played Borderlands 2 and you've played it in a way so that you remember the, the story word by word, which I know a lot of veteran players know that you do know the story pretty much you know the dialogue from the first time from first time Claptrap talks to the last time Lilith says no rest for the wicked at the end like me <laughs> but the story in this game it's a really good sum up of why jack did what he did and i feel like this game has a lot of little little details that if you've played borderlands 2 it makes you literally go like that's where he got the teleporter from that's why that's why he could go invisible that's how they made the robots and it's like it's really really fun to see how this character that you love so much in Borderlands 2 became the way he was. Now, you also get to see the reason Jack does the things that he does. The reason he doesn't believe people like Lilith or Roland because they pretty much betrayed Jack. Also, I feel like the, the storyline in this game, it's not the worst one, but it's not the best one either. And I feel like the story saves this game a lot. The story is kind of shit in the beginning, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I don't really care for the the mini-bosses or the, the supercomputer or any of that shit. But, you know, once you get a little bit closer to the end of the game, it gets better as you go on. And I feel like that's why I'm gonna give this game the second tier rating. Because it's just, it's summed up so well 
why I like Borderlands 2 and what made the character Handsome Jack so good. I think this is one of the best Borderlands stories there is. And the only reason for that is, is because it's it's such a good sum up of why Handsome Jack is why he is what he is. And also other characters. It's like there's even Professor uh, Nakayama in there. That's like, oh wow, he was like a fan of Handsome Jack. It was like a fangirl. And it makes you think like, oh shit, he... He was like pretty much working with him. That's why he was such a big fangirl. You know, that even though that doesn't really make any sense, but for me, it was, it was a cool moment, okay? It was a cool moment. To be fair about the story, there's not that much to say, honestly. The game is pretty fucking boring from like the beginning to a certain point. Like to the point where you get to Helios, the game, the game story is really fucking dry. And at that point, you already kind of are thinking of not playing the game. And it's just like, I feel like that's the reason why a lot of people don't like it. But I just like it because there's those little, little spots when you realize, oh fuck, that's where Handsome Jack became Handsome Jack, you know? And I feel like that's why I like this game so much. Or the story, at least, I really like it. When it comes to the game gameplay of this game, though, I can't say anything bad about it. Because it's just more Borderlands 2. Like, if you put these games side by side, there's really no difference when you compare Borderlands 2 to Borderlands pre-sequel. There's nothing, no difference. The only difference is they took out the slag, which I completely understand why they did that. It was horrible. And they replaced it with Cryo, which I think honestly was a pretty cool, neat idea. And they even have Cryo in Borderlands 3. So obviously it was an idea that stuck on and they kept going with it. When it comes to the guns of the game, well, I think they got pretty lazy with the guns in this game. Most of the guns in this game that you use... They're just weapons from Borderlands 2, or they're renamed uh, guns from Borderlands 2, which I think is pretty lazy. There are some pretty cool guns, to be fair. There's like the Excalibur that you can get if you have 2,500 uh, 2, badass rank. I don't have that because I'm playing this with my other accounts. But overall, I think this game's guns and gameplay, as far as it goes, it's pretty much the same tier as Borderlands 2. It was just a little bit disappointing that it's pretty much the same as Borderlands 2. And if you played Borderlands 2 for as long as I did, you were kind of waiting for something new to come out. And then you see this shit. And it's like, oh, wow, did I miss some files or some shit? You know, it's like, I think they fucked up in that moment. But I still think just because it's the same kind of gameplay as Borderlands 2, I enjoyed it. Because it was just more Borderlands 2. And I love Borderlands 2, so it's completely fine. It was just a little bit lazy, okay? It was a little bit lazy, baby. It's just a little bit lazy. There's honestly, there's honestly not that much to talk about this game. There's not that much to shit. There's not that much to talk about this game. The story is great, in my opinion. It's not the best, but it's great. It has its little neat times. The bosses are fine. Even though that shit boss is pretty fucking annoying. And I feel like every boss, every game, if every Borderlands game that has a boss that can fly, just get it out of the fucking game. It is so terrible. That does not make a good Borderlands game. Having a shit boss. Having a boss that can fly around the map, go away from you so that you can't shoot it anymore, it's the most boring fight you can give me in a Borderlands game. Overall, this game is definitely one of my favorite ones. It really is. And it helped me understand the best character in Borderlands 2, which is Handsome Jack. And I feel like, in the end, this game was just more Borderlands 2. And I hate saying that over and over and over again, but it's just, it's true. And even though I was disappointed in the fact that it wasn't anything that much new, it's did feed my Borderlands 2 addiction at the time, so I am glad this game came out. And also, I forgot about to talk about the I forgot to talk about the lasers. The lasers in this game, they're pretty great. They're awesome. I like them. They're a little bit overpowered though. Just a little bit overpowered. Especially with Nisha. Because you can just, you know, press F to go aimbot mode and then you can just sit there with your fucking laser. And fucking bzzz, hit headshots. It's quite ridiculous, but it's fun. And honestly, I am I approve of the lasers. And I'm glad they have lasers in Borderlands 3 as well. They have them in like... I think it's like an attachment you have for like SMGs. So it's not really a laser. It's like an attachment that makes the bullets become a laser or whatever the fuck. But in this game, lasers, amazing. I loved it. I love it. It's over. Entirely. Now for the last game of the series, in my opinion, this is the last one, the latest one that's come out. Now, we all know the 
launch of this game, everybody, you know, quickly realized that the story was something else. It is definitely the worst story in the game, in my opinion, even, even worse than Borderlands 1. In Borderlands 1, it still made sense, okay? Borderlands 1's story still made sense. I feel like Borderlands 1's story still made sense. That's why the story is way worse in this game. But the story in this game is just, it is so horrible, okay? The story just doesn't make any sense, you know? And the scenes doesn't make sense either. It's like, it's like the game was developed by game developers, but the story was made by people who don't have any contact to those game developers. It's like there's a, there's a scene in this game where uh, Maya dies, right? Maya dies. Spoiler alert. Not really. The game's been out. Shut up. Maya dies. It honestly, I remember I was screaming in this. Well, I wasn't probably screaming, but I was just like annoyed as fuck. Cause I was like, why am I just standing there? Right? Maya dies. I come out of the vault and I'm just standing there. A cutscene starts and the the twin, you know, the twin siblings come to you and they start harassing, you know, Ava and Maya. While all of this shit is going on, you know, Maya's about to die by Troy. While all of this shit is going on, I'm just standing there with my guns in my hand. Why am I not doing anything? What happened to me? It doesn't make any fucking sense. Okay? And then, you know, then Maya dies. And then the cutscene just rolls out and then you're just standing there. So it's not like I went anywhere. I just fucking stood there, saw Maya die and it was like, damn, that's crazy. Anyways, what are we going to do now, Lilith? And then the worst part of the game comes in. The fucking characters. I hate the characters in this game. Not all of them, but specifically one character. I feel like a lot of people hated her. Ava. This fucking kid. She is the worst thing in this game, I swear to God, anytime you go to talk to Lilith, any cutscene, Ava's there, you already hate it. It is so annoying. And the, the most annoying part about the, the story is, entire time of this game, entire, the, the entire time of the story, you protect Ava. Ava is like a kid, you don't let her get into danger, and then the one mission where she gets her powers, right? She doesn't have her powers yet but she's going to get them in the mission. What does this team, what does the team decide to do? You know what, Ava, we're going to put you in the front lines and we're going to make you fight Troy and the other bitch. I don't even remember her name anymore because I, I, I hate the villains in this game so much that there's just, it, it's just, it's, it's so shit. Okay. It's the, the first mission that Ava is going to get the powers in the end of that mission. They put Ava in the front lines and it, 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 it doesn't make any sense. It's like, what, what the fuck were they thinking when they made this game? It does not make any sense to me. Okay. Calm down. The best part about this game story though, is definitely the Reese part of the, of the game. Reese is definitely my favorite characters in the entire time. And honestly, uh, even, uh, I think it's Cassie in, uh, Eden six. Like he just says some fucked up shit and then he laughs about it it's like anyways let's get on with the mission it's like wait what it's like true borderlands stupidity but that's what makes borderlands games so good it's when they're dumb they don't make sense and they're fucked up at the same time that's what makes a really good borderlands story you know it's just it's stupid it needs to be stupid gearbox if you make a borderlands 4 it needs to be stupid okay it needs to be dumb. It needs to have jokes in there that don't have to make sense. You know, jokes that are fucked up and make you think, and you think, that doesn't make any sense. That's what makes the other games so fucking good. Because they have jokes like that. Except Borderlands 1. Because Borderlands 1 was trying to be serious and, you know, you have to save the planet or whatever the fuck. The story in this game is definitely, it's not always bad, but it's definitely the most consistent at being shit. That's how I would describe the story in this game. I'm gonna have to tell you something about the gameplay. The gameplay in this game is the reason this game doesn't suck as much as it should. Shooting in this game is the best shooting in all of the games so far. In this type of shooting where you can slide, you can jump, you can crouch in the air and you can do like a slam, you can, you have like different sights, you can switch between firing modes. It's just, it's so much better than anything we've had in Borderlands games. And that's why I gotta give credit to this game. And it is the only reason why this game is not the worst game. It's because this game's gameplay is so much better than in Borderlands any of the games that I have to give it the second worst rating when it comes to gameplay. Because if you disable 
the sounds in this game, if you put dialogue off, and you know, you, you boot up some Doom music, this game is the best game that you can have fun in. You just go into the slaughterhouse and you're just, you're just going at it, you know? Doom style. Better luck next flight. If you treat this game like a Doom-like game, it's so much fun. You have so much fun with, especially with Moe's, because you have like the, the mechanical robot suit, and it's just, it's so much fun. Honestly, overall, this, this game's, it was a pretty big disappointment for me, even for personal re reasons, because, well, I ended up, because I had so high hopes for this game that I pre-ordered it, by the way, never pre-ordering ever again. Uh, I pre-ordered the, uh, the Super Deluxe Edition, which costed me, I think it was like 100, 100 euros. It was not worth it. It was, I'm going to have to say it, it was not worth it. Even though the DLCs in this game kind of also helped, but I'm not counting the DLCs in this rating. This game was kind of a disappointment. Now, in conclusion, what makes a good Borderlands game, huh? What is it? What makes a good Borderlands game? Well, as I said before, it's mostly in the story, okay? And it's not that the story has to have some insane, you know, insane concept or it has to have really good, you know, character development or whatever the fuck. Even though Borderlands 2 had that and it is the reason it is so good. Borderlands has to not take itself too seriously. That's what makes a good Borderlands story. It doesn't need to be very, very carefully picked, very carefully made story that it's trying to make sense. Even though it really doesn't in Borderlands 3. It just needs to be stupid enough so that the player understands, okay, they're not trying to be too serious. But then at the end, you have a conclusion where the tame co game kind of flips around. And the gameplay, honestly, just fucking, just pre-sequel the things you've done uh, with with Borderlands 4. Just, just pre-sequel that shit, you know? Just copy-paste everything you had in Borderlands 3 and just put it in Borderlands 4. I think you'd probably get pretty far with that, to be fair.